from hauntedflower.com and hauntedflowerreviews.com and now I'm going to be reviewing the second half of the releases from July 26th. This is the group of DVDs and to take a bath in the background is Harley the Cat. First title is Dylan Dog Dead of Night. This movie did not have a good beginning with me because it wouldn't play in my DVD player. Whatever this copy is the studio sent me just would not work. It wouldn't recognize it. Luckily, I was able to play it in my laptop, but the presentation had something left to be desired. It stars Brandon Ruth, aka the Superman from Superman Returns, as this guy who used to be kind of a mediator between different creatures of the night until uh, something happened to a girl he loved, and then he became an enemy of creatures of the night. And he swore off the whole thing until something happens and something happens to his friend. And then he gets involved in it again. This movie sucks. And it doesn't suck because there's vampires in it. But there's vampires, werewolves, and zombies. They're done in kind of a schlocky way. I can't take any of it seriously. It's not even fun. And something like this should be a lot more fun. So-called horror comedy gets neither the horror or the comedy quite right. You've got Tay Diggs as, like, head of the vampires at some club. Not scary. Not a leader. Go back to doing Rent. The only thing that really captured my attention in this movie is that Kurt Angle, former WWE star and current star of TNA, plays a werewolf in it. So that made me watch that scene because that was pretty funny watching him try to act and then wear funky, like, teen wolf makeup. Is this worth watching? No. Don't even rent it. And this particular DVD has no extras. The next one is a smaller release from Cinema Libre Studio. This is called Mark of Love. This is a romantic comedy. The story is about this guy named Mark. And at the beginning of the film, his latest relationship fails because she says, I love you to him. And he doesn't really respond with the right answer. So they're done. To distract himself, he takes up karate, and when he arrives for his first class, he finds out it was a trick, and that five women are standing there hoping to ambush guys into joining a speed dating with them because they're desperate. After they offer him some money, he agrees to try and give them some tips about how they too can snag a guy, but when they start asking him about his past relationships, it seems that they all fail based on the same thing. It's kind of cute. It's a little low budget. Whenever he tells the stories, all of the girls go into this fun funny Barbara Walters type glowy filter to really romanticize the time he had with them. And after a while it gets a little annoying for me that every single one of them has this. It's based on an original play called I Love You and You and You dot dot dot. 89 minutes, has bloopers and outtakes which are cute, and a behind the scenes shenanigans which aren't really worth watching. So eh, mark of love. Eh. The last title from Cinema Libre Studio is a documentary called Will the Real Terrace Please Stand Up? It is an in-depth look at the relations between the U.S. and Cuba and the story of the Cuban Five. It's 82 minutes long, has some extended interviews, has Danny Glover on the street asking random people questions for about three minutes. Basically, the film is asking, why give Cuba such a hard time, especially since the CIA sent some of these guys in there to do stuff, and then later punished some of them for it. So it asks a lot of questions about the seediness of all of that, and talks to some really old Cubans who remember all of this, including an 84-year-old Fidel Castro. Bay of Pigs, Cuban Missile Crisis, Assassination Attempts on Castro, all that's covered in here. It's okay, it's not really gripping. And it clearly has an agenda. The agenda is, Cuba isn't so bad, guys, hey. So out of these titles, which one should you watch? This one? This one? This one? Definitely not. So what you should do is actually go back to my first video and get source code again. So that's part two of my releases for July 26th. It seems that the Blu-rays definitely win over the DVDs for the selection that I was given to review. And I hope you'll check out one of them this week. Thanks for watching. Bye. For more reviews and to find out about free contest giveaways, go to hauntedflowerreviews.com. My reviews are also available as a podcast on iTunes. Search for Haunted Flower Reviews and subscribe and leave us feedback and comments.
Our store is hauntedflower.com, where we specialize in fantastic licensed apparel from movies, TV shows, video games, anime, and more. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash hauntedflower and Twitter at haunted underscore flower. If you're local to the Indianapolis area, visit IndieMojo.com for details on how you can win free screening passes.